All right, all right, all right, all right. The name is Dale. Doing the movie review of Brightburn. I'm also going to do a quick recommendation of two documentaries. One, the Wu-Tang Clan of Mikes and Men. And another one, What's My Name, the Muhammad Ali two-part documentary. These reviews and quick recommendations are done on behalf of Audio Liquor Mag, Audio Liquor Magazine. Going to start off with Brightburn. This movie is about, just say, what if a baby from another world crashes on Earth, but instead of being sent to Earth to save humanity or protect humankind, he does the opposite. So basically, it's evil Superboy as a young teenager in Smallville. It's the bizarro Superman at the age of 13 or 14 who turns into a serial killer. This was one of my most anticipated movies of the year. I was really geeking to see this movie. I thought it was going to be the sleeper hit because of the concept. I just really dug the idea. And I have to say it disappointed me. It's not a bad movie. It's just not nearly as good as I thought it was going to be. I had high expectations and it failed to meet my expectations. When I left the theater, I couldn't I couldn't quite figure out what was missing from the movie. I couldn't put my finger on what was the flaws. What what was it about it that kind of was empty? And after having a text conversation with one of my folks, I realized that they showed too much in the trailer. There were very little surprises. I kind of could predict, oh, this is gonna happen at this time. Oh. I can see what I saw in the trailer on in this particular scene is coming up. So that was one of the problems I had. Another problem, it never really explained why this good boy suddenly turns evil when he turns when he when his birthday comes, when he turns 13. It's almost like when he goes through puberty, he turns evil. They never really gave a concrete explanation to why he's doing what he's doing, what is his purpose. It alludes to certain things that give you hints, like maybe the spacecraft that he came down in is triggering him to act a certain way. Or maybe his mission all along, maybe they sent him to Earth all along to wreak havoc and destroy Earth or take over Earth, but it never really fully explains what's going on. So I had a little problem with that. I think the makers of this movie really dropped the ball because this is such a great idea for a movie and it has so much potential and it didn't fully land and execute and it didn't really meet the potential that it had to be a, a great movie. I thought it was going to be much better than what it was. Elizabeth Banks, she plays the mother of Evil Superboy. She gave a very solid performance. The young actor who plays this evil version of Superboy, Jackson A. Dunn, he did a good job. The performances across the board were pretty solid. Didn't have any problem with the acting, but it just missed the mark. And the Gunn brothers, they wrote it. They're the brother to James Gunn. I believe he's a producer on Brightburn. And if you're not recognizing that name or don't know who he is, he's the guy that directed both Guardians of the Galaxy film. So that was another reason I had high hopes for this movie. I'm going to give this movie a B-. minus. Like I said, it's not a bad movie, but it's not something you have to rush to the theaters to see. So I'm going to move on and give you a quick recommendation of the Wu-Tang Clan of Mikes and Men. This is a four-part documentary series that's on Showtime. It, chronics, it chronicles the, the group's career from start to basically present day. It gets in, it goes in deep, the drama within the group, 
mainly everybody has a problem <laughs> with RZA. He's he's the producer slash producer slash rapper that started the, the Woo. He came up with the concept. He had the great idea for the Wu Tang Clan as a group. And they tend to have problems with him and his brother Divine, who's basically just on the business side. So it really kind of gives you a picture of how you grow up with these guys. These guys are like, a, they have a brotherhood, they like family. And then when business and money gets in the mix, it can kind of splinter the friendship. You don't look at fam the same way. So I thought it was a very insightful documentary. I'm glad it's four parts to it because they really could flesh out their whole story. You know, sometimes when you have these documentaries and they're only like an hour and a half or two hours, there ain't but so much you can tell. So I really enjoyed it. If you don't have Showtime, I'm pretty sure there's other ways you can see it. I give it an A minus. Now I'm gonna move on to the Muhammad Ali documentary series. It's two parts. It's called What's My Name? It's on HBO. It's directed by Antoine Fuqua. If you're not familiar with him, he did both of the Equalizer movies, did Training Day, the remake of Magnificent Seven, so on and so forth. He has a good resume of making good films, solid films, should I say. And this is one of the most detailed documentaries on Muhammad Ali that I've seen. I've seen a lot of different, I've seen my share of different documentaries on Muhammad Ali, but this one really, it really gives you a lot more information because it's almost a three hour documentary once you put both parts together as far as the length and time. And I really like how it goes into his matches with certain individuals. It's another documentary called, I forgot the title exactly, but it's another documentary where they're interviewing some of his opponents that he fought. But this one, I felt, really goes into what happens with him from the start of a certain opponent to the aftermath of when he loses. And I thought it was a very well done documentary. I highly recommend it. I believe LeBron James is a producer on it. So if you don't have HBO, um, I'm sure there's other ways you can try to find it and see it. But I will give that an A. It's one of the better it might be the best documentary I've seen on, on Muhammad Ali. I mean, it even goes into his his days at the Olympics. It doesn't really gloss over anything. And I found it funny because every time he he would have a match, well, I ain't gonna say every time, but it's like four, four or five different times when he was getting up there in age, he would say, I'm retiring, this is my last fight. The next thing you know, he comes back and fight again. So I found that funny. But anyway, check those, check those two documentaries out. The Wu Tang Clan and one on Muhammad Ali. I'm finished. I'm done. I'm out. There you have it.